Hi third graders. I'm back with our um, the next week of remote learning and um, we're going to be finishing up our module three today or this week. So we're going to I'm going to um, teach you a lesson and then I'm going to assign you some review work to be doing in Edge Your Friend and Learning this week so that way we can see if we're ready to move on to our next module. Um, and the next module paperwork will be sent home towards the end of this week so that way you'll have it um, for after Thanksgiving break for our new and then we'll start our our next module which will be module four so right now we're going to be doing module three lesson three and it starts on page 73 all kinds of threes in there and we're going to be multiplying with threes and sixes so look at all those threes in there so um, I'm gonna get my camera ready so go ahead and get your papers right in front of you so that way you're ready to begin and make sure you have a pencil so that way you can follow along with me all right <clears throat> So lesson three, module three, multiply with three and six. I can use different strategies to multiply with the factors three and six to so and solve e equal group problems. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're continuing. Remember, we've done fives and tens, and we've done twos and fours, and now we're going to be doing threes and sixes. So your community wants to use wind turbines to bring electricity to homes. Each wind turbine has three blades. Choose any number of wind turbines for your community from five to nine. How many blades are there? Show two different ways to find the number of blades. So let's choose five. Let's just make it easy on ourselves. We're gonna choose the number five. And we know that each turbine has three blades. And we need to show two different ways to find the number of blades. So there are a couple ways that we have learned how to visually show multiplication. One way is to do our rectangle. And if each rectangle is one turbine and each turbine has three blades, then we would need how many rectangles? Well, if we're using the number five, we're going to need five rectangles. Two three, four, five. I think my pen is running out of ink. So we've got five turbines. <clears throat> we don't know how many total blades yet, but I know that I could do five times three. So if I'm counting by three, five times, three, six, nine, 12, 15. So there are 15 blades on five turbines. That's one way I could show this. I'm gonna switch pens because that one is running out of ink. Another way we could show it is to use a number line. Remember we were skip counting on a number line. So if I draw a line here and I know I'm gonna have to get to 15, but I'm gonna start at zero and I'm gonna go to 20. So if I go to 20, halfway will be 10. Halfway between zero and 10, we've got five, and between 10 and 20 is 15. And now I can do my other little marks because it just makes it easier. That way I'm, I'm trying to space out in between as evenly as I can. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So if I were to count all those up, right, each one of these is a number. So I need to skip count how many times? I need to skip count five times and I'm gonna go in groups of three. So I need five groups of three. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then one, two, three. So 
if you want to have those numbers in there, you can. But what number did I land on? I landed on the number 15. So I know that if there are five wind turbines with three blades on each of them, then there will be 15 blades total. Okay. All right. So we're counting in groups of threes for that one. All right. Our next problem, we're going to go turn to page 74. There are four wind turbines off the coast of a small town. <clears throat> Sorry. Each wind turbine has three blades. How many blades are there on four wind turbines? Count equal, equal groups to find the number of blades and show your work. So this time, they want us to do equal groups. So how many equal groups do I need? <clears throat> I need four equal groups because there are four wind turbines. So I need one, two, three, four groups. And then how many are in each group? Well, each wind turbine has three blades. So I'm going to have three blades on each one of my turbines. So three blades in each one of my groups. So if I count by threes, three, six, nine, twelve. How many equal groups are there? We said there were four equal groups. How many objects are in each group? Three. Three objects. So what multiplication equation could we write for this problem? Well, I know that I have four equal groups, and inside each group there are three objects. So I could say four times three equals, and we know that it equals, we already did our counting up, right? Equals 12. So how many blades are on four wind turbines? There are 12 blades. There are 12 blades. Okay, let me position my camera. So now we have a wind farm, and the wind farm has rows of wind turbines. Look at all those rows and rows of wind turbines. The farm has nine wind turbines in each row. How many wind turbines are there in six rows? So we can see one, two, three, four, five, six rows of wind turbines and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in each row. So we know our multiplication equation would be six times nine. Now we might not be able to do that off the top of our head yet, right? We don't have all of those multiplication facts already in our head, but we could use some facts that we already know. We skip count by five a lot, right? I can remember in kindergarten, my card, kindergarten, my son Nicholas was skip counting by five. So that's a, a fact that, that you should be able to do pretty quickly and pretty easily. So, and then that can help us to get to six times five. We're going to use one we know to help us get there. So we're going to write a fives fact with a factor of nine. That just means that we are going to be multiplying five times nine. So let's think about that. Let's count by fives nine times. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Right, isn't that easy to count by those fives nine times? And I can use those fingers, right? I could do five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, there's my nine. 
So I know that it equals 45. Now that's close, but is that my all of these? No, that's actually only five of these rows. How am I going to get the last row? Well, to get the last row, I know that these rows right here add up to 45, right? If I multiply five times nine, I know that five rows times nine is 45. Well, I just need to add another row of nine, right? So I know that nine, 45 plus nine, that's really all I need to be doing, right? To get to my next number. So what is 45 plus nine? I'm giving you a minute to think about it, to add it in your head. 45 plus nine equals, I hope you got 54. So our multiplication equation for the whole problem that was up here is six times nine equals 54. We just used a fact that we know. We know we can count by fives. And then we just needed one more group of nine to help us get to six times nine. So how many wind turbines are there in six rows? There are 54 wind turbines. Don't forget that label. We need to know what we're talking about, right? Nice job. Alrighty. So Pedro is making a, making six pinwheels for a garden. Each pinwheel will have eight blades, and we can see all those blades here, right, sticking out. How many blades will be on six pinwheels? So we have six times eight is our multiplication equation. Six times eight equals, we don't know. We're gonna this time use a threes fact and doubling to help us figure this one out. So we're gonna write a threes fact with a factor of eight. So that just means we're going to do three times eight, okay? So we just wanna know what it would be a threes fact, which is our three, with a factor of eight, so three times eight. So what is three times eight? Well, let's count. Eight, 16, 24, right? If I count by eight three times, I get 24. Now we just need to double it because I know that if I have three doubled, I have a six. So this is half of this answer. Three times eight is half of six times eight's answer. So if I double 24, 24 plus 24, and if you need to, you could use your side of your paper. So four plus four is eight, two plus two is four. So that must mean 48. So write a multiplication equation to model the problem. Well, that's already up here, right? Six times eight equals 48. So how many blades will be on six pinwheels? There will be 48 blades. So these are just some strategies that you could use to help you find your multiplication, your the answer for your product when you're multiplying. All right, so let's move on to page 76. Slide my camera over so I'm in the right spot, but not crooked. <laughs> All right, so now we've got another wind farm. This wind farm has six rows of wind turbines. And then there are four wind turbines in each row. How many rows, how many wind turbines are there in six rows? So I can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows. And there are one, two, three, four wind turbines in each row. So we're going to first complete the multiplication table to help solve the problem. Use strategies you know to find the products for the threes facts and the six facts. So let's see if we can figure out how to finish this multiplication chart. So I know that if I do, so this, this tells me that I'm gonna take the number on this side, multiply the number on this side, see how they're, and then they're gonna meet with the answer. So one times one equals one. 1 times 2 equals 2. 1 times 3 equals 3. 1 times 4 equals 4. And then if I go to my next row, 2 times 1 equals 2. 
2 times 2 equals 4. 2 times 3 equals 6. And 2 times 4 equals 8. So now let's do our 3's. 3 times 1, 3 times anything times 1 is going to equal itself. So that would equal 3. 3 times 2, so that's 2 3's. So 3, 6. Three times three. So we've got three, six, add another three to this. Six plus three is nine. And then the next, the last one, it would be three times four. Three times four, so add another three. Nine plus three is 12. So then we down here, the next row, four. Four times one, they already did for us is four. 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, and 4 times 4 is 16. Then we have our 5s. Five times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3 is 15, and 5 times 4 is 20. So now our 6s. Six, 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 2 how many are six twos, or <laughs> two sixes, sorry, 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 two sixes, it could be six twos as well. Um, so six plus six is 12, six times three, 12 plus six, giving you a minute, hope you got 18. And then 6 times 4, so 18 plus another 6. I hope you got 24. So, how, so now we need to circle the product of where the row for 6 and the column for 4 meet. So our row for 6 and our column for 4 meet at 24. So how many wind turbines are there in 6 rows? There are 24 wind turbines. Oop, I guess I should have started a little further to the, my left. Okay, so now let's do some checking for understanding. Fix my camera here just a touch. Karina is making six small pinwheels for the community garden. Each pinwheel will have seven blades. How many blades will be on six pinwheels? So we have six pinwheels. Each pinwheel will have seven blades. So what is my multiplication equation for this one going to be? This one's going to be six times seven. Now we could use one of the previous strategies we we found, right? We could either do what would three times seven be and then double it. We could do five times seven and then add another seven more, right? So we could use any of those strategies to figure out our the answer to our problem. I think I want to use the um, five times seven and then we're going to add seven more, okay? So let's first figure out before we get to this one, what is five times seven? So let's count by fives seven times. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So we have 35 when we do five times seven. Now I just need to get seven more to get to six times seven. So then I'm going to do what is 35 plus seven. So seven plus five, I'm hoping you said 12, regroup my one. And then one plus three is four. So six times seven is 42, which, so that means how many blades will be on six pinwheels? There will be 42 blades on six pinwheels. So that time we used the fives fact. This time we're going. They want us to use a threes fact and doubles to find the product for this one. 
So let's take our 6, right? And we're going to split it and have to do a 3. So we want to do what is 3 times 9? And then we're going to take that answer and double it. So 3 times 9. Well, let's count by 3's 9 times. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. So 3 times 9 is 27. Now I need to, so I found my 3's fact, now I need to double it to find my product, to find my answer. So now I need to do 27 plus 27. So I've got some room over here because I know I'm going to need to regroup. So it might be just as easy to do it off to the side. 7 plus 7 equals 14. I regroup my 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 54. So that means that 6 times 9 equals 54. Okay, number 3. This time we're going to use the 5's fact and addition to find the product. So similar to what we did for this first one up here. We're going to find the 5's fact. So we're going to take our 6 and we're going to make it a 5. And we're going to do 5 times 8. So let's count by 5's 8 times. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. I get 40. So now, in order to get to 6 times 8, look, at I just did 5 times 8, so I just need one more group of 8 to help me get my answer. So 40 plus 8 equals 48. So that means that 6 times 8 equals 48. All right, now we're going to move to the on your own section. So remember, this is where if you feel comfortable or if you just want to try them independently, you could pause the video here and try it and then come back to the video and check your answers. Or you can just stay right with me and we can do these together. It's your choice. All right, so Michael buys two packages of hamburger buns. Each package has the number of buns shown. So we can see that each package has how many buns? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just going to put that under here. So each package has six buns. So that way I know. How many hamburger buns are there in two packages? So this is just one package. We want to know how many are in two packages. And we're going to do this by showing the equal groups first. So I have how many groups? I've got two groups. And how many are in each group? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six in each group, right? I can see that here. So what would our multiplication equation be? Well, I have two groups of, how many are in each group? Six. Two groups of six equals? What is 6 plus 6? 12. So there are 12 hamburger buns. Number 5. Find the product using a 5's fact and addition. So we're going to use our 5's fact to help us find the answer. So I'm going to take my 6 and I'm going to make it a 5 because I'm just going to go one less factor. And I'm still multiplying by 7. So let's count 5 7 times. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 35. So now I need to just add one more group of 7. So 35 plus 7. If you need to do it off to the side. Whoops, sorry. If over here, just... So you can line them up. 7 plus 5. I hope you answer 12. Regroup my 1. And then 1 plus 3 is 4. 
So 35 plus 7 equals 42. So that means that 6 times 7 equals 42. Now we're going to do 6 times 6. So I'm going to regroup my 6, make it a 5. I'm going to change that factor. But I'm still multiplying by 6. So now I need to figure out how many 5 6s there are, or how many 6s there are for 5 of them. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So I have 30. And then I just need to add one more group of 6. So 30 plus 6 equals, I don't really need to do this one off to the side, 36. So that means that 6 times 6 equals 36. Okay. Now for number seven and number eight, we're going to find the product using a threes fact this time, and then we're going to double it. So I'm going to take my six, and I know that I can split my six in half and make it a three, right? So if I do three times four, my answer, once I double it, will be the answer for six times four. So I'm just basically finding half of this one. So three times four, well, if I count by threes, four times three, six, nine, 12. Three times four equals 12. So now I just need to double my 12, 12 plus 12. And if you want to do it on the side, you can. Two plus two is four, one plus one is two. So that equals 24. So that means that six times four equals 24. Now we're doing the same thing again, finding a threes fact and doubling it. So my six will become a three. Let me just split it in half times. I'm going to keep that six though. Okay. So three times six, let's count by threes, six times three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. So we have the number 18. So now I want to double the number 18. So 18 plus 18. 8 plus 8 equals. Excuse me. I hope you put 16. Regroup my 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals a 3. So we have 36. So that means that 6 times 6 equals 36. That's one of those when you start memorizing your multiplication facts kind of is a little easier because you're like six times six is 36, right? Kind of goes together. It rhymes because you have that six in there. Okay, and our last page, number 78. Just going to adjust my camera a little bit. Sorry about that. Keeps getting crooked on me. All right. So Diane has four rolls of fabric. She can make three costumes with each roll. How many costumes can Diane make? So we know that if she's got four rolls of fabric, she can make three costumes with one roll. And she's got four of them. So we're going to show equal groups. So how many rolls of fabric does she have? She has four rolls of fabric. And each one of these rolls of fabric Three costumes can be made from that amount of fabric. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So we have three, six, nine, twelve. So she can make twelve costumes. Number ten. Devin plants six rows of tomato plants in the garden. There are four plants in each row. How many tomato plants does Devin plant? Well, what's my multiplication equation for this problem first? We have six rows of tomato plants, and there are four plants in each row. So we know it's six times four. Okay? So we could um, either use our make it fives, right? And then... Um, add one more one group more so why don't we try that one for this problem so I have a six I'm gonna make it five 
times 4. So I'm going to count 5s 4 times. 5, 10, 15, 20. And then I just need one more group of 4 to get to 6 times 4. So I'm just going to add 4 more to that. So 20 plus 4 equals 24. So there are 24, I'm going to put my label down here, tomato plants. All right, we are going to have this handy dandy multiplication table to help us find the product of some of our numbers. So I'm going to look, so when I look first at this chart, I see there's some holes in it, right? There are some blank spots. So let's first fill in those blank spots. So let's figure out what the answers should be in those spots, okay? So if I am in this row, right, uh, that means I'm doing three. So three times, and then the column down here, so three times seven. So if I had 18, I just need to add three more to that. So 18 plus three is 21. So I'm still in the row for three, but now I need the column for nine. So I'm gonna add three more to my 24. 24 plus three is 27. Now I'm my next um, blank spot is in my sixth row. So it's six times seven. So I'm gonna add another six to 36. 36 plus 6, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. Now I want 6 times 9, so I need to take my 48 and add another 6 to it. 48 plus 6, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. 7 times 3. So what's 14 plus 7? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Now I want 7 times 6. So I'm going to add 7 to 35. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. And finally, I'm going to be in row 9. So 9 times 3. So 18 plus 9. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. And 9 times 6. So I'm going to add 9 to 45. 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. So that helps me fill out my chart. Now I want to show you how to use the chart to find your answers. So I want 3 times 9. So I need to find the 3 row and go across until I get to the 9 column. 3 times 9 equals 27. 6 times 9. Find my 6 row, go over to my 9 column. And I meet at 54. 3 times 7. I start in my 3, and I need to go and meet at my 7, which is 21. 6 times 7, my 6 row, my 7 column, and I meet at 42. Now I can do the same thing for all of these down here. I can use my three row and my eighth column. Third row, eighth column brings me to 24. Six times six, my sixth row and my sixth column. And I meet at 36. My eighth row times my sixth column, eighth row, Sixth column, I meet at 48. Three times 10. This one we should be able to do on our own, right? We could just count 
10 three times, 10, 20, 30. We don't even need to look at our chart for this one. What about five times six? We could also do that one without looking at the chart. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Four times three, we should be able to do this one without the chart as well. Three, six, nine, 12. Six times seven, now we could use a strategy we've learned or we could just use the chart. Six times seven equals 42. Now you're not always going to have the chart, so you are going to want to make sure you use those strategies. And eventually you're going to have these all memorized, so you won't even need the chart. And then nine times six. Nine times six equals 54. Great job. All right, so for independent work that I need you to do and then return to me at school, um, either through a picture or by dropping it off at school, will be 3.3. So you're going to do that black and white sheet that's right after this page. And then I also want you to do the module three review. So you're going to do, this has a front and back as well. So this page and this page as well. So um, you're going to need to do the black and white worksheet that goes along with module three lesson three so it says 3.3 up in the right hand corner and then you also need to do this review worksheet okay all right my third graders i hope you have a great week and i will see you soon bye